uh, a short presentation on, uh, on what is Gini, just like a, a, a big overview before you start with the hands-on tutorial. So before I start, how many of you this is your first Gini engineering conference? Great. And how many of you are here to do experiments? I mean, you want to learn how to use it in order to do your own experiments. Uh, is anyone here that is like from my campus, like an operations person or a developer? Is it a developer? Okay, great. Uh, so uh, let's get started. So Gini is about exploring the networks of the future. So I'm going to give a little bit more explain exactly what, it, what I mean. So this is the outline of the talk. I'm going to first talk a little bit about uh, what is Gini, like a very uh, a big overview. Uh, how is Gini being used today? Some basic G, uh, key, key Gini concepts that you're going to need for the rest of the day and for the rest of the conference. And then I'm going to close by doing like a, a very quick demo on using Gini. What I'm going to do is something that you're going to do also in the duration of the day. Uh, that will be like just a, a very quick walkthrough of uh, what it means to, to use Gini. So Gini is infrastructure for experimentation. Gini is a nationwide testbed for running a networking system, a cloud a type of experiment. And it basically provides compute resources across the United States that they are connected in custom topologies that are that are defined by uh, the users by the experimenters and they are uh, based on layer two. So layer two and up. So we are basically when you're using Gini you can get a few compute resources and you can connect them in a custom layer two topology. Uh, across the country. So, what type of compute resources do we have? So, first of all, we are uh, federated with existing testbeds. Uh, I don't know how many of you have heard about any lab or planet lab or the wireless method of orbit, but all these different types of testbeds are federated with, with Gini and you can have access to them through Gini. Uh, we also have what we call the Gini RAT, and I'm going to talk a little, a little bit more in detail later, but not a lot. You're going to get to use the Gini RAT throughout the day today while you're doing this. Tutorials. Then we also have wireless compute nodes, both in like static compute nodes that are just like one wireless interfaces. And we also have homes that uh, people use in order to run uh, mobile experiments. Uh, we also have uh, what are the Gini networking resources. So I talked before about uh, the Gini RAT, and this is I don't think I'm not really seeing, but this is a, a network diagram of, uh, of a Gini RAT. And later today we're also going to. Uh, talk about the Gini network architecture in more detail. So uh, don't worry, I don't see it's now I'm going to talk uh, later in more detail about this. But within a rack, there is like a, a switch where you can build your custom topologies within one rack if your experiment you know, is only one location. Uh, if you need to cross to cross locations, then uh, you can go from one rack using either uh, using regional networks in the US and using a research at Vacom, like uh, Internet 2. Go across track and, co and connect your resources in layer two topologies. We also have a uh, wireless uh, network infrastructure. We have uh, WiMAX base stations in uh, many places around the US, and uh, there is also a 4G, 3G uh, TV network. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about it in a while also. So, uh, what about the TV architecture? So, I said that you can get resources from Iraq through regional to the backbone and then back to another. Uh, Gini RAT. So the, the Gini network is uh, flexible and you can do, it can support like cloud research, it can support domain science research, it can support uh, networking research. And um, I'm sorry. And you can see here that the, the basic thing is that we have, you know, like Gini RATs in multiple places, and then we have Gini enabled equipment also in, uh, in different places in order to form this dynamic flexible layer to network. So what is the current uh, Gini build-up? We have uh, more Wi-Max wi base stations, around 100 asteroid handsets uh, around the, the US. Uh, we are still a Gini enabled various regional, so we have a Gini enabled another five or six uh, Gini regionals. We have injected more open with uh, the Gini Internet 2, and we are adding Gini racks across the US to take part of their call, there are 40, and the University of London is around 50 Gini racks in the deployment. Uh, so what are these Gini RACs? Gini RACs are uh, built by uh, three different vendors, uh, by IBM, HP, and Dell. Uh, each one of these teams are collaborating with uh, some researchers that are building the Gini software that follows these RACs in order to enable 
able uh, to use searches to, to access them. So the, IB, the IBM team, the BI is really a model from the privacy and between uh, the BI and the Meta Center is probably the most popular for the IBM wrap. Uh, the HP wrap, the, the BI is big my gear and they're uh, working with the Gita, uh, the Gita folks. So the, the HP wraps are uh, run a very close software to what the like, Emulum uh, runs. Uh, they're also the, the Dell wraps, the collaboration with the University, and uh, they're building also the Yet another different type of uh, team software. Uh, so, Gini, uh, Gini Wimax, we have the Gini Wimax, we have 26 Wimax base stations and we're taking different locations to invest one of them from the uh, multiple Wimax uh, base stations. They're, they are sliced and virtualized, so you can have multiple people using the same Wimax base station in isolated devices and uh, run their experiments. Uh, they are uh, interconnected, so you can Imagine running a wireless experiment that crosses the US, you can have some mobile nodes, let's say in Stanford, some mobile nodes in Rutgers, and connect over layer topology over uh, the TD core network. And uh, there are also, uh, as I said before, there is also a 4G TD network that you can use for your research. Now, some uh, basic uh, TD process. One, as this is a very big nationwide test bed, and the whole idea is that multiple people should be able to use it at the same time. So multiple experiments should be able to go at the same time. So let's say this example, we have a virtualized topology that uh, is built out of the physical resources that are obtaining, and an experimenter decides what type of resources, which computer resources, access to which router they want, and they build a virtual topology. At the same time, another experimenter can build another virtual topology on, on top of the same, on the same physical resources, and they can actually share the test with while being uh, isolated in what we call a slice. So the, uh, one of the big problems, the key concepts in Zini is the notion of a slice, and we slice both computer resources and network resources in order to build this virtualized network so we can, different experimenters can have, uh, can have uh, their own virtual, virtual network in their own uh, slice. Also, Zini provides uh, deprogrammability, so an experimenter within their network, they can uh, program uh, all deep in the network, they can program how they can be this uh, in routing uh, in the edges, but also in the core of the network. Uh, the main way we're doing this now is by deploying overflow switches across the DIN network and allow and slice the overflow switches so again, all the experimenter concerned and then every experimenter gets uh, a say on how their own traffic is being routed through uh, the DIN core. So uh, that was like a big overview. You're going to use a lot of the concepts that I just described. You're going to do your own slices. You're going to uh, run your own experiments. And you're going to use the Gini Racks that I have just talked about. So let's go a little bit and see how our people are using Gini, just to give you an idea of the type of research that uh, happens now uh, in Gini. So Gini is being used currently for two main threads. One is it's being used for research, and it's being used uh, for education. So in research, we have a future internet architecture team that are using the team in order to try out their ideas and see uh, how their ideas uh, scale within Gini. Uh, there are people that are doing software defined networking and people that are trying to evaluate in a large scale uh, new protocols. Uh, in education, uh, Gini is being used for, for different types of computer science classes, networking, cloud, wireless classes, distributed uh, system classes, and uh, and as of uh, October, as of this quarter, so we have like over 2,500 uh, users, and we're going to scale it on the unit to many classes throughout the, the past couple of years. So, uh, major, the three major PIA teams all have uh, slices in Sydney, so there's, uh, they have done uh, demos in different Sydney engineering conferences. So, uh, and Sydney is a unique test that has done some work with science and research because it's a big layer of network and it's like large scale, it can allow people to implement their own forwarding and their own routing within the team network. If you are interested, all three of these teams have the uh, tutorials at this PC. There is also another future internet virtual choice net that is also going to have a tutorial. If you look at the program, you'll see all the different uh, uh, tutorials that, that, that are offered. So if, you, if you're interested in learning more about how they do Gini and how they deploy uh, their, uh, their architecture within Gini, you can do one of the tutorials. Day. Now, uh, there's a growing use of Gini in the classroom, so we have over 50 classes that have used Gini and are currently uh, using Gini this uh, semester in the class. 
then they are they're both underground and uh, grounded level market. And also people have music uh, outside the US that use in in order to support classes uh, in Dini. We have ready to use tutorial and assignments in the Dini Wiki uh, that either try to explore the Dini concept, they're uh, uh, about software defined networking, their distributed concepts, and also the general programmable uh, network concepts. Uh, we have uh, been doing many tutorials and, uh, and workshops in collocated with the uh, other uh, with other conferences. So immediately after this engineering conference, as I said, we collocated, we have a, 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 senior, a senior workshop, which is about a research that is using Bentley for validation and evaluation of, of their ideas. We have like six long papers for short, and all of, and most of the papers there are also going to do a live demo on finding a Bentley. This was not only papers that are uh, using the same Bentley, it can be any any kind of testbed, but the same thing you have to evaluate their ideas on a real testbed and uh, do live demos. There is a there is a free symposium at Gene event with 2015. Uh, it's going to be in Kansas City and it's going to be about using Gene in, uh, in computer science education. There is also a Gene workshop that is coming up in uh, Northern State. It's uh, in the beginning of uh, November and it's going to give like an overview to researchers and educators in the area. Uh, around uh, around more than state and it's going to discuss it's going to be an introduction of Gini uh, for four people who are using for research and these classes in the uh, in university around this area. Now moving forward to the basic thinking concept that you're going to meet throughout the throughout the day. So the first of all I talked already a little bit about this when I said that this is a slice of the network that uh, can be used by multiple people at the same time. So the, the, the key concept in Dini is a slice, which is nothing more than an abstraction. It's a collection of all the resources you might need in order to run your experiments. This can be compute resources, it, it can be the ends, it can be road seeds, it can be wireless resources, it can be pieces of network equipment, access to a specific uh, suites in order to forward the traffic, and all these, all these different types of resources, you can aggregate them in what we call a slice, which creates a spiritual topology within Dini in order to be able to run uh, your experiment. And slice is the main uh, is the main term that, I, that is isolating experiments. So your traffic does not interfere with the experiment or someone else if you don't see each other traffic. All this being isolated in the different uh, slices. And of course, experimenters are responsible for what happens in the slice. So the people that are using it are responsible for the software and responsible for what the uh, slice uh, is doing. Now, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the level of the trust and how the Work in Gini and how this is get access to Gini. So there is a there is an entity here that's called the Clearinghouse, which is the basic trust authority that gives access to users in Gini. So if you're a user and you want to use uh, Gini, the first thing you want to do is talk to the Clearinghouse to make sure that you're an authorized user that can have access to Gini resources. So you talk to the Clearinghouse, and that is where you also and go and register your experiment with Gini or slides, right? So you go to the Clearinghouse. You're authenticated as a user and you say I want to run into an experiment and that will give you back a specific uh, piece of security like artifact that we call like potential and it's going to say okay you're authorized to use it and you also can start your own experiment using this slide that you just registered with me with, with the clear account. Now once you have this slide credential you can go to individual aggregates in uh, in GD and you can go and start accumulating your resources. So you can go to one rack and get to the end. You can go to another rack and get to another the end. And you can go to networks, let's say, you need to know as an internet too, and say, you get different things of a network in order to connect your end. So with, with this one slice, that's why I said before it's an abstraction. It's nothing more than an authorization that you get in order to use the resources. And you present this to what we call aggregate managers, which is the actual software that manages the resources. And from there, you can get whatever resources this aggregate uh, manager uh, provides. So, uh, you might not get from, uh, from we're talking all this time, but basically, Gini is a federation. So, we have different administrative domains. For example, every Gini runs a different administrative domain, it's a different AN, where you can go and ask uh, your resources and your Gini slice can span all these different administrative domains. So, that's why you have your slice credentials, you individually go and talk. Different uh, entities that provide resources in Gini, and you collect all your resources in one slice in order to run uh, your experiments. 
Now, how do you talk to this AM? So we are going to talk a lot about RSpec today in the morning about the conference. RSpec is a resource classification document, nothing more than an excellent document that describes what type of resources you want from a specific uh, algorithm manager. Uh, and it, you can think of it as like the machine language machine. So that's the way you don't have to necessarily, I don't want to lie, but you're going, you're going to see RSpec because you're going to see RSpec today, but well, you don't have to make it, you don't need your own RSpec. But you can think of it as like the machine language that your tool that you're going to use will talk with the uh, genie entities, the genie attribute managers, in order to communicate and to request something, get you something. This is the, the language that they uh, use in order to talk to each other. Now, how does the resource reservation uh, have in a genie? We have three different types of uh, aspect. One is the advertisement aspect, which is basically an XML document that describes what an aggregate manager has to offer to the experimenter. So this is how uh, an aggregate manager advertises the, the type of resources that it has available. So for example, if this is a rack, you can imagine the advertisement being type of the end, from the C, type of OS that you can run uh, on this sort of resources. Here we have the network aggregate manager. This might be advertisement of paths that you are able to request, of VLANs that you might be able to reserve within uh, within this network. If this was a programmable, let's say an open flow, in what type of flow space do you want to open? This type of flow if you want to control this network. So what so what goes in the advertisement aspect it really has to do with what, what is the aggregate manager uh, you're talking. Now once you know what this this aggregate manager has to offer, then you construct or not you your tool. Construct what we call a request aspect, which is basically you say I want to be an and then I'm between them and then your tool goes and finds this in your request aspect in order to send it back to the man to the aggregate manager in order to request a slice of what it has. So this is this is how you get different resources from different aggregate managers. And once your request and if the aggregate manager can satisfy the request, if it has enough available resources to satisfy, it will send back the manifest aspect, which basically describes exactly what you got. So for example, here you can say I want one VM, and the manifest aspect will come back and say you have this specific VM and this is the ID used. To access it, and this is how many interfaces are in the bank on the interface. So here you, you request your uh, your resources, your the aggregate manager makes a reservation for you and gives you back the manifest aspect that describes exactly what you got in the specific uh, aggregate manager. At any point in time, you as the experimenter can, can, ask, can ask the aggregate manager in order to tell you what you have. So you don't have to uh, keep track of what, what you have reserved. At any point in time, you can go back and you can re get your manifest aspect from the aggregate manager. So, these are the basic, uh, you know, I just walked you through in uh, uh, how does the reservation happen. And I'm going to go now into a demo just to see if it's happening, how do we form these request aspects, how do they look like, how do we get back to manifest aspects. So, let me first of all describe a little bit about the topology of the experiment. So this is going to be a very, very, very simple experiment. We're going to have two VMs within one run with one link. Uh, between them, one will be the server, the other will be the client. In the server, I'm going to uh, use uh, what we call the control script. I'm going to show you in the aspect exactly what it is. They will automate the installation of the software that they want on the, on the server and what the software will the client. They're just going to do like some kind of interaction uh, between them. So, Okay, so this would be a very familiar page for all of you because all of you, before you come here, you have to get what we call the Genie account. So this is the Genie portal, which I'm going to use to log in, and this is a piece of software. It's a web, it's a web portal, it's a web service that basically will talk to the clearing house that I was talking before in order to authorize me and register uh, my experiment. So the first thing I have to do is go and authorize myself uh, with the clearing house. So and here, so here you see. That we will have to, if you can, uh, uh, we're, we're going to talk a little bit more in the first tutorial about the authentication with Gini and how it happens. But here, basically, you're going to choose about which specific organization trusts you as a user. So, for example, if you're a member of, uh, let's say, Boston University that is up there, if you're a student there, then you automatically get access to Gini. And you can, by using your Boston University credentials, you can get automatically a Gini account. I'm going to log in 
to the team project office uh, identity provider i'm going to continue and this will get me to my uh, to my home page and here is uh, i have just authenticated myself with the clearing house and now i'm ready to go and register uh, my experiment and you'll see here as i scroll down that i'm uh, that i have already uh, many slices but let me just find part for this for this is here and we're going to talk about what is the notion of project and how that this all organizes the research continue. And uh, I'm going to go and create a slide. And remember, this is something I also do with the with clearing house, with the slice authority. I will go and I will say I want to start a new experiment. And this, I want this to be the name of my slides. Right? And now, and you still read or it's too small? Think about the back. A little bigger. Okay. So you see that now that I have this uh, this slice, I got back what I said before the slice the slice potential. Then now I'm ready to go and add uh, resources. Today in the demo, I'm going to use a visual tool uh, for resource reservation for charts. This is a uh, just being developed out uh, developed by Utah and it's just. Uh, being the issue is still better. And then, uh, um, one resource Okay, and this is a graphical tool where you can go, you can think of it as an aspect editor. It's like a tool that will help you create your own aspects. So I can start here, I can start, you know, writing the ends if I want to. And I can create links between them. And if I go here that says the R spec, this will show me this machine language that I'm showing to follow basically describe the topology that I just drew. Now for this specific experiment, I'm gonna load the pre-existing R spec and R spec I made before and I, it has all the specific elements that I need. So And this is posted. This is basically the handle thing example. You can also follow the instructions online to do it. Basically, our handle thing uh, tutorial. So I'll go here. Okay, and you see basically what I described before. There's a server, there's a client, there's a link between them. And now, I, now that I've described this, I have to say in which aggregate manager will I go and submit this. Uh, this R spec. So I'll turn to the reservation and then I'm going to walk a little bit through the, the R spec. But because the reservation will take some time. So you see here I have uh, all these options. For this, for uh, the example today, I'm going to use the Florida Exogeny app. Okay. So now what happens is that the, my tool went, it took the request R spec, it went to the aggregate manager, in this case it was the Florida University, and it goes to the rock and uh, presents my R spec and my slice presentation in order to get my reservation. This will uh, take some time. You see here it's been because the aggregate manager agreed to give me these resources, but my games are not up. And they're not up because these are real resources, they're real computers that need to be loaded into the operating system, they need to be booted, they need to be configured the way that I described on my R spec. My software needs to be installed, compiled, all these things. So the actual <laughs> reservation time it takes some time. Usually we say this is where you go, you grab a cup of coffee, and you come back after like five to six minutes to make sure that everything is up. And depending on how complicated your topology is and what kind of images you're using, this can take from one to two minutes up to like uh, several, like 10, 15, uh, 15 minutes. So let me go to the request R spec just to show you and I don't know if this will be it's too small, but basically what I want to show you is that basically I have a, this is how I describe the node, you know, it's at the end, and then the services basically here is where I, I said that I can also uh, decide what software I want to be installed automatically on my VM when it comes up. And here it says where to download the software from and and what uh, what commands to execute while my VM uh, is booting. Now, if I go to the manifest R spec, which is basically the, the one that comes back and describes what type of VM I go, where is my VM, and, and all these things, it's here, and it has more information 
that was that the information that I just had in my request management. Now, if I want to go and see the progress of uh, how my slides um, is progressing, I can go back. So now my tool knows that I went and requested resources from uh, PFIU. It will go, and you see up there it says, you know, the resources are configured. So it goes periodically and says on the status of my resources. And when my resources are good, if there, it will say that uh, they are ready. So uh, another thing to mention and, uh, is that all the, res all the reservations in Gini come from an expiration time. So this is probably going to be valid maybe for a week, the whole time uh, you get resources for, and then the resources are going to expire unless you renew them. Uh, it's always good practice, of course, to believe your resources when you're done. This is a third test that the resources are, you know, are shared between all of us. So it's good practice to always believe and leave resources for other uh, people to use. But if, if, even if you do, eventually your resources will expire and they will go back to the resource, to the pool of uh, uh, available resources. So uh, while we're waiting, because this will take some time, I'll go back to move forward with the presentation and then I'll come back to show you uh, what happened here. Okay, so uh, ways to get help while you're using Gini. We have a community manager, Gini, uh, Gini users. It's a uh, Google Groups, and you, you should uh, sign up. And this is basically the place where you get to ask questions when things are not working, when you're not sure how to do something, and someone uh, uh, will give you an answer. There is also an IRC chat room where if, you're having, like, a, if you need to debug something real time, you can go there and get online with someone that can help you and try and debug. Uh, your problems, and there is also uh, documentation on the GDP about how to do specific things. It's what we call the how to make it. about like small, uh, small pieces, small recipes about how to do different uh, things in GDP. Other important uh, links that you should know of there is Gini Announce, that is a place where we announce Gini News and events. So if you uh, care to be notified about future events, you can sign up for the Gini Announce. Gini Experimenters is more uh, tailored uh, for experimenters, so it will have more. Uh, opportunities for workshops, tutorials, conferences, all this goes out on the training opportunities in the experimenter list. We also, this is a new mailing list we started with experimenter ops. This is a, if you're running an experiment in Gini and you're here to notify about uh, out of this or maintenance things that have happened to Gini infrastructure, so you know how to uh, design your experiments to avoid them, then you should register for experimenter ops. This is a, a mailing list that is run by our uh, operate uh, by the operating center, which is called the uh, demo, and you will basically be notified every time there is uh, either an update or a specific event that is happening uh, in the Gini uh, infrastructure. There is a there are there are more mailings. You can get the full list here. Uh, I'm gonna these slides are gonna be online, so you don't have to write this down. You can go later and, and see and read what the uh, Now, if you have a question and you're not sure. Uh, you know, you're not sure if you want to uh, post it public to Gini users or if like the more generic questions about Gini uh, in general, then you should email help at gini.net. This goes to many people, mainly within the project office, but also goes to Sarah, myself, and Vic, which are basically experimental support group, and we'll make sure that uh, your, uh, uh, where your question is answered. If you have a problem while using Gini, the fastest way to get help is to use Gini users. But if you have any other type, you're not sure how to design your experiment or something more particular to your specific case, then you can help uh, help us in with that. Now, this is the agenda, and I know that you cannot read it. I just want to walk you through a little bit through it. You see, it has different colors, which I'm pretty sure that the only thing you can see, given how small the letters are. But uh, basically, every session that is has like this red color is of general interest. The the green ones are uh, from. Uh, most of your are experimenters, there are, most of them are basically tutorials, whether uh, like the, the majority of them are hands-on tutorials, there are also a few that are just uh, presentations. Uh, there is a, the, the orange ones are for developers, these are the sessions that are specific, specific for developers. Uh, the, the purple ones are for operators, and there is this weird color here because it's a join 
between developers and experimenters, and I'm guessing this is the zone between the orange and the green. So this is basically a session where the experimenters and developers get together and they discuss experience, new features that we need, and uh, bugs, problems, whatever. But we get together and discuss about how to move forward and what is, uh, is needed in the, in the uh, infrastructure. Now, I'm going to focus a little bit more on today, because this is what you hear more to hear about. And I know you still cannot really read that, but here is where we are now with this uh, session that we're all together. Then we're going to split in two different tracks. One, one team is going to stay here. The other team is going to go to Lockwood, Walnut? Oak. Huh? Oak. 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 Yeah, great. <laughs> two <of> room. <laughs> and we are going to have a, a, we're going to do the exact same exercise, but each room is going to use a different graphical tool. One team uh, is going to use Jax, which is why it is now. The other team is going to use JPEG, which is a tool that they, uh, so Jax, as you probably realize, is something that is on the branch of the web, the web service. JPEG is a Java application on the branch of your own uh, computer. They do very, very similar things. It's basically a graphical tool to draw your topology, uh, do the reservation, and make sure to get the alignment back, tell you there's so, so many. Uh, all, all these things, and the, 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 the instructions are going to be online, so if you're interested to see what people have done, how they did the same exercise with different graphical tools, you can uh, uh, go and take a look there. You should, uh, you're going to use, so this is the day that you're going to learn how to reserve resources in Jimmy. The experiments we're going to do today are not, you know, scientifically very interesting, but it's just to teach you how to use Jimmy and how to reserve the topologies. So that later in the week, we don't, uh, the, the later tutorials in Jimmy, they're going to take it as granted that you know how to reserve your resources. So basically, many of them are just going to give you a link to the RSpec, which is this XML document that describes the topology they want you to bring. And they will go go and use your favorite tool to reserve your topology. You can use uh, either of the two. Some of them will describe a different way to do the reservation. But basically, uh, they will take it as granted that you know how to draw your own topologies and do your own reservation. Uh, in uh, all the common sessions, so if you see a session in your agenda that spans both tracks, they're going to be in this room here, uh, and then we're going to split up again, and then at night we're going to have a pub dinner, and, uh, and I want to know who is interested in joining us. So we'll just, you know, go out, pub dinner, discuss any questions you might have about Tini or not discuss about Tini at all, or whatever you want. So can I just get a count of like, who is interested in joining? Okay, now hold your hands up so they can come. Okay, I would say around 25 people. Okay, so do you have any questions? And after your questions, we'll go back and see if my live demo was a failure, a disaster reduction. Any questions before we move? Any yes. Yes. So at this time, when we were just, you know, like a building team, that the most of the connections between going out from Iraq is usually one uh, one gigabit aggregate for all the, the experiments. We think the core is more. It goes from 10 to 100 gigs within the within the uh, the team network, uh, within the team network core. Some places they have 10 gigs going out of the rock. So we are still trying to figure out, you know, what our limitation is and what's going on increase the bandwidth. When you do a reservation, all your reservations come with the bandwidth in it, so that you don't interfere with each other. The aggregates do their best not to over oversubscribe the, the links. Usual reservation, if you don't specify anything in Jimmy, is usually 100 times between your resources. Any other questions? No? Oh, okay. Let's see what happens to. Okay, you see here. Uh, okay, you see my resources are ready. I know you cannot really tell because the conference is not good, but the moment my resources are ready, they turn green. This is a little bit universal with all our graphical tools, both data, jobs, slack that we need to use when your resources are uh, ready or green. If your surface has failed, they're probably going to be red. And then it will say no in big letters to the reservation fail. Now, uh, so then, uh, let me begin my mind to make sure it has all the accurate information. So then, if I go 
and click at the server. I'm going to see here what I said before. The like my manifest contains the exact information of how I can have access to this uh, machine. I will let me go to the details because here you cannot really see what happens. Let's go to a more friendly view, and also with this resolution, it's not really very good for text. But okay, so here you see this is just a nice way, a nice organized way to see my manifest artifact. You see here the information that I need in order to get access to the machine, how to add a key. You see here that many, 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 many people have access to this machine. We're going to talk about this later. So basically, Jimmy, uh, with the organization in project and the supplies, can give access to you and your collaborator to the same resources. So at the time of reservation, you can specify who else you want to have access to your nodes. If you're collaborating with someone, then you can both have access to the same uh, resources. And as I said, for this specific experiment, what the install script did, they basically automated the installation of some uh, software. Okay, so basically, in the server side, what happened is that uh, it, uh, it went and installed a web, a web server and an iWeb server to, to the machine and brought up like, like a test dummy the website. And here, you know, and it basically had and then the client did multiple uh, requests and you know like it gave some statistics about time to for transfers and the same about the the iper. So basically this was a very this was an automated experiment that you know the server started, it loads some software, it installed uh, a web server, it installed an iper server, the client came up and did some many, many requests to both the web server and to the iper server and we got it for the I can uh, have access to the machine, so I can SSH, and you're going to do this now as well in your tutorial. So basically, one second, just SSH one of your nodes. Okay. Okay, so you can SSH your computer resources like it's any other computer. So you have physical access to so the LMS you can go and install your software and then the, and you can you have access to them and you can log in, do whatever you need. A good way about automating your experiment during the reservation it means you do not have to go and SSH your computer each one of them individually, which now I have only 20 easy to do, but you can imagine if you're having like 50 nodes. For your experiments or tomorrow, for your not tomorrow. On Wednesday, you're going to see someone that's going to try and bring up like 70 knots up in one slice. And this, you can imagine, it would have been very tedious if you had to go and begin each one. So, automating your experiment is very helpful for that. And today, you're going to learn how to do that and how, how to write this code script and automate your experiment. So, I know that. Just to give you an idea of how this whole script looks like. Okay. So, uh, install script can be in any language you want. It can be shell script, it can be Perl, it can be Python, whatever you want to write your install script up. And basically, if you look at it, and we're going to look at it in more detail this, uh, this afternoon about how to write, it basically has very simple command uh, you know, go and install a Apache or go and install iPerl. Once you know, once this is installed enough, then please go and configure my Apache the way I want it so that it records on it and I can have access to them. And you know, if if this is a, if you're a client and you're not a server, then you know, like please run these scripts. Wait, wait a little bit until my server is up and then go and run the script. So they're very simple uh, scripts that you can write in order to automate your experiment. And we have like templates that you can use in order to, to write them. And that completes the, the demo and the talk. Any other questions after the demo? Good. So now you get to try the exact same thing I did by yourself and try and do it. So we are going to have a break, I think, until uh, we're splitting. Ah, yes. Just a minute. So to just keep the class sizes small, uh, we are going to split you up into two groups. Group one will stay here. 
and group two will go to uh, Oak. Uh, I have slips of paper. I'll hand out. If you're group one, stay here. If you're group two, go to Oak. Right. So it's Sarah okay. signing up paper. Uh, you say here. Yeah, we try to enter. So you can have the Oh, you guys even for next get your Okay, yes, let's go. Wi-Fi is open, but the problem is on I don't know if Yeah, I didn't like 